Shalom and welcome to Jerusalem Studio. If one safely goes back to a cliche always relevant to the Middle East about my enemy's enemy being my friend, Turkey is certainly not yet defined as Israel's friend, even though it is less vehement a foe than it used to be recently. It is more like my enemy's friend, the enemy being Hamas in Gaza, while Israel has the friendliest of relations with two of Turkey's adversaries, Greece and Cyprus. But with the onset of a new administration in Washington considered hostile to the Turkish government, but reputed to be susceptible to Israeli arguments, Ankara seemingly inches closer to Jerusalem. Is it really so, and if it is, what's the next step up at this road? To analyze this, we are joined from central Israel by Dr. Chai Eitan Konya Narochak, who is a research fellow at the Moshe Dayan Center at Tel Aviv University, and as, as well as at the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Also joining us from Turkey is Mr. Yusuf Erim, who is TRT World's editor at large. Thank you for joining us as well. Thanks for having me. And with me here in the studio is our TV7 analyst and host of TV7's um, uh, Watchmen Talk. Thank you for uh, joining us as well. And Amir, I'd like to immediately dive into uh, today's topic. What is uh, the, the definition currently of relations between Ankara and Jerusalem? So what a difference uh, a few months make and one election makes. Only in September, President Erdogan uh, lashed out at Israel um, in a televised address to the uh, UN uh, um, General Assembly. And uh, right now, uh, we seem to be, if not in a honeymoon, it's uh, quite difficult when uh, a couple divorces and then courts again to call it um, a honeymoon. But obviously, there is uh, some rapprochement. And what uh, we are seeing is uh, slowly moving from an emotional phase in the relationship to a more rational one. Interests speak once more. And we have uh, seen and heard several signals. Uh, there was a report regarding uh, Mr. Hakan Fidan, the uh, uh, director of MIT, of the uh, Turkish intelligence agency, visiting Israel or, or meeting with his Israeli counterparts. And there was a Voice of America interview with one of uh, Erdogan's associates uh, saying that uh, there is uh, uh, no point in keeping the relationship uh, where it was over the last 10 years, ever since the Mavi Marmara incident. And Erdogan himself uh, uh, tried to bring home the distinction between relations with the uh, political echelon, that is Prime Minister Netanyahu, and the professional echelon, that is uh, Mossad and other uh, defense uh, establishment uh, officials. Of course, all of that has to do with what you uh, referred to, the onset of the Biden administration. The Turkish believed that uh, uh, Israel still has some inroads into this administration, even though Netanyahu personally um, is not uh, um, so well liked by Biden. But um, the Turkish government officials who referred <clears throat> to the relationship with Israel for some reason mentioned the month of March, next month, as the time frame where the ambassador uh, who was recalled to Turkey some four years ago could come back to Israel and relations will be warmer. Whether they mentioned this time because this is the election month in Israel, maybe they hope that there will be another government in place or not, this is for them to say. Indeed. Mr. Erim, I'd like to refer the next question to you. Uh, obviously, uh, there were plenty of overtures coming out of Turkey, not only in the direction of Israel, but also the European Union. Uh, we saw the exploratory talks uh, uh, happening in uh, Istanbul when uh, the delegations of both uh, Turkey and Greece met there in order to discuss uh, uh, the maritime dispute uh, in the Aegean Sea as well as in the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, and there are uh, various uh, discussions about uh, restarting, of course, also the UN-led uh, negotiations between 
Turkey and, and Cyprus, uh, all of which uh, Israel is closely monitoring, obviously, with uh, keen interest of seeing uh, where those things will head. Uh, then there was, of course, also the situation in which uh, uh, relations between Ankara and Tehran, uh, Israel's arch enemy, uh, uh, seemed to chill uh, for a certain period. But then suddenly when the foreign minister of Iran uh, uh, visited, uh, Mohammad Javad Zarif visited uh, Turkey, uh, held a joint press conference with uh, his Turkish counterpart, Mevlut Yavuzoglu, uh, during which uh, there seemed to be more of a rapprochement, uh, if you will, at least uh, rhetoric-wise, between those two countries, uh, it uh, raised many questions from what I hear as to where the directions are heading on that front. So uh, give us a little bit of a taste uh, to uh, where are things actually standing at this stage with regard to Ankara's intentions vis-a-vis -vis Israel as well as on a regional scope? Well, first of all, Turkey, just as many other countries, are repositioning itself for new global realities uh, under the uh, Biden administration in the United States. And uh, uh, this is expected because when you have a change in U.S. foreign policy, uh, like the scope we're going to see tra uh, transferring from Trump to Biden, there's bound to be a very serious butterfly effect into the region. And as such, every country is trying to uh, jockey for a better position either with the United States or into a position to be able to react to uh, regional developments that are going to happen and impact uh, certain countries. And Turkey is no different. Uh, we've seen Turkey try to have warmer ties with Israel, Europe, uh, Saudi Arabia as well, uh, even uh, positive rhetoric towards Egypt as Turkey's preparing for the Biden administration. Now, uh, when we go over to the Zarif press conference between himself and Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Çavuşoğlu. Uh, it looks like the Iranians uh, definitely understand that there has been a drift between Turkey and Iran. And we heard both foreign ministers talk about the lack of communication uh, between both countries and a drop in bilateral trade. So uh, the Iranians have been feeling somewhat of a cold shoulder from the Turks, and they were feeling very, very left out of the fray. And, Nagorno-Karabakh with Turkey and uh, Russia working very, very closely together there. And uh, I think what they're trying to do is actually very, very smart. Uh, Iran's trying to work a new alliance in the South Caucasus, and they're trying to lock themselves into the table and lock themselves inside another theater with Turkey where they have the flexibility to make grand bargains, whether in Syria, whether bilaterally, or whether Azerbaijan. But uh, when we look at what's happening in Azerbaijan, uh, Iran's not an actor that's very, very important to Turkey, because after all, Turkey has very good relations with Azerbaijan. Uh, Armenia is the other main actor represented by Russia at the table when Turkey, uh, when Turkey uh, conducts diplomacy with them. So uh, Iran feeling very, very threatened due to its Azerbaijani minority in the north obviously wants a seat at the table before anything can go bad. But uh, at the end of the day, I don't think Israel should look at the Turkey-Iran relationship as a black and white relationship. I've stated this before, that uh, everything in the Middle East is not black and white. It's actually different shades of gray. And uh, Iran is a country that Turkey needs to work with because they project power in the same areas. They project power in Iraq. They project power in Syria. They project power in Azerbaijan as well. And uh, when we look at the way Iran and Turkey deal with each other in a third party theater like uh, Iraq or Syria, when both countries fill up the same uh, same space, they're basically like oil and water. They separate. Turkey's proxies separate from Shiite proxies and they do not occupy the same space at the same time. So Turkey does provide a good way of containing Iran without escalation because of the way it fills in these voids and does not allow Shiite militia into these places. Uh, when, we, we, when you look at it, uh, what's going on in the region from a Tehran perspective, Tehran's definitely concerned. They look to the north, you now have a Turkish base in Azerbaijan. To their, to, to their west, you have the Turkish border. To the south, you have a possible Sinjar operation uh, that might be 
conducted with the Iraqi government and the KRG. You have multiple Turkish bases in the KRG. And then you also have Turkish force projection, power projection in Syria, in the north, uh, in the northeast with Rasulah in Tel Abyad and in the west of Syria with uh, Idlib as well. So this is definitely something that uh, Iran sees as concerning as Turkey's beginning to push that Shiite presence back off its borders and further away. So uh, I view this visit by Zarif as one to uh, sit down and try to reestablish diplomatic relations. While we said that it was very warm and cordial with Cho Shola, it was not the same with the Turkish president Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who uh, definitely was unhappy with the Iranian's reaction towards his poem in Azerbaijan, and that's something that he hasn't forgotten. Of course, and uh, considering the fact that uh, Foreign Minister Zarif uh, was the one who uh, lashed out at the president himself, it was quite intriguing to see that dynamic between the two. But uh, Dr. Konya Nawochak, as uh, we hear from uh, Mr. Erim, uh, there are a lot of different changes occurring currently in the Middle East, and Turkey, of course, is a very significant actor in this region. Uh, Israel, of course, uh, looks at uh, the different developments, uh, considering the fact that Azerbaijan is a close friend of Israel as well, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, it also uh, poses a certain, uh, uh, if you will, uh, contrast to the Iranian threat, uh, at least uh, allowing it uh, uh, having uh, a certain stage from the northern part of Iran. And then uh, we're talking about uh, what also Mr. Z uh, uh, Erim said about Iraq, uh, where uh, the Turkish defense minister, Hulusi Akar, visited Iraq, reached certain understandings with the Baghdad central government about a possible Sinjar operation, cooperation that would, of course, uh, uh, bring uh, Iranian concerns into the picture. Uh, it, does Israel look at this, considering that Iranian presence in Iraq is also of significant uh, concern to Israel? The situation in Syria, of course, with Hezbollah there, with uh, uh, various Shiite proxies from Afghanistan, from uh, 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 different uh, countries in the regions, which are also controlled by the RGC. Uh, and then, of course, this is a common enemy to both Turkey and Israel. Is this something that Israel tries to, to differentiate between Turkish policy towards Israel, which might now alter in light of the Biden administration taking office? Or are we going now to expect uh, uh, still the same rationale saying, okay, unless overtures are made on the political level, we're not really going to engage with Turkey beyond certain red lines. Okay, uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, uh, with this question. I mean, uh, from my perspective, uh, Israel is very much aware that Turkey has to deal with Iran uh, since two countries are uh, existing uh, next to each other for centuries. Uh, so uh, this recent summit between Zarif and Cavusoglu uh, from my perspective, was a message not only for Israel, but also was a message for uh, Washington. Uh, from my understanding, uh, this uh, message uh, was very much uh, open, and it was saying that uh, two countries could get rid of this uh, latest uh, disagreements that happened because of the uh, uh, President Erdogan's speech uh, in Baku, uh, where he uh, mentioned that uh, the southern Azerbaijan was under uh, Iranian occupation. Of course, that was the hidden message inside of this uh, inside of this poem. From the Israeli uh, point of view, uh, Israel is uh, giving uh, very much uh, importance to her relations with Turkey, but unfortunately, uh, nowadays we are seeing some uh, concrete challenges uh, uh, between the two countries and. Uh, from the Israeli point of view, the most important issue is uh, Turkey's ongoing support to Hamas. Uh, in the Israeli eyes, uh, Hamas is a terrorist organization. And secondly, of course, Turkey is constantly uh, criticizing Israel, and even uh, in some cases, it is seeking to delegitimize uh, Israel. And uh, if we are going to speak about a genuine normalization, of course, Israel is also expecting to see an end to this uh, policy. And uh, the last but not the least, uh, of course, Israel is also expecting to see a Turkish ambassador here in uh, Israel and also to launch 
its own uh, ambassador in Ankara. As you already mentioned, two countries have very much uh, mutual interests uh, in the region. And one of the most important uh, interests, of course, is containing Iran. Uh, we all know that uh, Israel uh, is very much disturbed uh, with, the, uh, with the Iranian presence in the area which is located in the south uh, of Damascus. And uh, we are, uh, Mr. Erim also, uh, uh, he also emphasized that uh, the Turkish proxies and the Iranian proxies are uh, also uh, are engaging in a sort of a struggle uh, in northern Syrian uh, area. So uh, this is uh, very crucial, but uh, we still have to wait uh, to see uh, for a breakthrough in the Israeli-Turkish uh, relations. I, as far as I understand, the Turks are uh, waiting for the uh, new Israeli elections, the result of the new Israeli elections. Uh, we, we can understand uh, the reason very well, uh, because Mr. Erdogan, at the end of the day, his relations with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is not uh, the best relation, so he's expecting to see, uh, to work with a different Israeli partner. Indeed. Well, not the best relations is an understatement. But uh, before I, I would like to hear your take on this, uh, Mr. Oren, uh, I'd like to actually ask Mr. Erim. Uh, I've heard uh, uh, various reports about uh, a possible overture in which Turkey would uh, end its uh, hosting of, of Hamas uh, uh, officials on Turkish soil. Is this something that uh, uh, was discussed in Turkey? Is there some th uh, truth behind uh, those reports? Uh, or is this uh, just uh, uh, media trying to instigate a certain process uh, which would uh, then uh, uh, obviously uh, bring a more favorable approach to the possible rapprochement between the two countries? Well, I haven't seen anyone confirm uh, those reports that were in, uh, I believe, the Times uh, England uh, newspaper. I haven't seen any confirmation of the reports. And then we also need to remember there's many different factions of Hamas that are loyal to many different countries. Uh, you have the Hamas that's more loyal to Egypt, Hamas that's more loyal to Iran, Hamas that has good relations with Turkey, Hamas that has good relations with uh, Mohammed Dalan. And uh, which one are they talking about? Uh, I can see that Turkey definitely being much tougher on the factions of Hamas that are uh, more influ influenced by foreign powers. Uh, but the, uh, main fa the main faction in Turkey that uh, uh, sits down and talks with the Turkish government at different levels, at the mid-levels, uh, I don't see Turkey taking any type of hard action against them. But then again, I would also want to say that Turkey will not allow any non-state actor to move against a sovereign, especially with any type of options that would originate on its own soil. So if there's any type of evidence of this happening, I can guarantee whether it's Israel or any other country, I can guarantee that this is something that uh, neither Turkish intelligence nor Turkish security services uh, is not going to allow in this country. But um, also going forward with the Hamas issue, and not just Hamas, just broadening it out to Palestine. And when we look at the Abraham Accords, we see that many of these Arab countries have had non-existent relations with Israel for many, many years. And it was the general idea and understanding that uh, to support Palestine, you shouldn't have relations with Israel. And we've seen how that's gone over the last two, three decades. We have not seen any type of progress. I really think it's time for something new. I really think the Abraham Accords are a good step for ha allowing these Arab countries to have relations with Israel where they can work in a mediating role. And I do think that Turkey, its re relations with Palestine, uh, the talks that it can have with Hamas on behalf of Israel could work to de-escalate the situation and help bring peace. So I think that engaging Israel is more positive for Palestine than keeping uh, frozen relations with Israel. And I think that, I hope that's something many Palestinians understand because I see that question being asked to me a lot. If Turkey normalizes with Israel, does that mean Turkey's abandoning Palestine? No, it does not mean Turkey's abandoning Palestine. You don't have to be anti-Israel to be pro-Palestine. I don't like that word anti. I think you can be pro-relations with Israel 
and pro-Palestine at the same time. It just depends on how you manage negotiations, how you manage your relationship with Israel, how you build confidence where you could be accepted as a mediator in the future. Mr. Olin. Well, it's even more complicated than that, of course, because uh, one is not uh, sure whether Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinian Authority, would consider good relations between Turkey and Hamas to be pro-Palestinian. Uh, so that's that's another matter altogether. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the the uh, uh, conflict, the real conflict, not not just the cold shoulder shown by Erdogan towards Israel uh, in the uh, seven years since he took office uh, in, um, over the uh, preceding decade, but uh, the sharp period of his uh, verbal attack on uh, President Peres at Davos. And then, of course, after the Mavi Marmara, this took place after Operation Cast Lead in uh, late 2008, early 2009. Now, for the last six and a half years, there has been no such operation uh, by Israel against Hamas. So um, the conflict, even between Israel and Gaza, is not what it used to be when Erdogan lashed out at Israel at the time. Another factor is that Qatar has made its peace with its neighbors. Qatar, of course, being Turkey's ally as well as uh, uh, Hamas uh, supporter. And perhaps most important, we have uh, talked about very, very um, current, perhaps urgent issues, but not about the most existential one, and that is the nuclear issue. What will Israel do if, following an Iranian breakout towards nuclear weapons, Saudi Arabia will try to have one? And Turkey would obviously not sit idly by. Turkey is a great power. It would want to be a nuclear power, too. It's also a NATO member. Is Israel going to attack a Turkish nuclear infrastructure? It's unthinkable. So Israel will have to find a way to have its relationship with Turkey on several levels. And what we are seeing now is somewhat similar to the Jordanian relationship with Israel before peace was established in the mid-1990s. Defense, intelligence, this was excellent. On the political level, especially with Likud-led governments, Less so. Well, in the interview you had on Watchmen Talk, TV7's Watchmen Talk with General Defrin, he emphasized also that military relations between Israel and Turkey remain uh, rock solid. The relationship, uh, yes, and perhaps the defense industry can cooperate again. But obviously, Israel found other training partners, mostly Greece, uh, to supplant what happened with uh, Turkey some 20, 25 years ago. Indeed. Uh, Dr. Konya Nawochak, do you see at this stage readiness in Jerusalem to reconsider relations uh, in, a, in a warm sense of relations with Turkey in light of the latest developments and the overtures that are uh, evident on the ground uh, from Ankara's part? Well, uh, let me underline the fact uh, having proper relationship with Turkey is the Israeli national interest. Uh, since 1949, uh, we have proper relations with Turkey. Uh, you know, uh, recently we uh, had uh, this Abraham Accords and we are speaking about normalization with uh, United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, and uh, without declaring it with Saudi Arabia. but. Let us not forget, we are enjoying such relations with Turkey since 1949. And uh, given Turkey's strategic importance and geostrategic importance, I think uh, Turkey should be, uh, uh, for, from the Israeli eyes, uh, we have to keep Turkey as a friend of Israel. And uh, if we are getting some uh, positive signals from uh, Ankara, of course, we should uh, give uh, you know, we should take steps uh, towards Ankara to signal them that Israel is eager to have proper relations with, uh, with Turkey. But at the same time, we should also make it very clear. Uh, Israel today is a stronger country. Israel is not lonely anymore in the Middle East. And as a result, we deserve a more respected 
behavior from Ankara, which means uh, in order to have a proper genuine normalization uh, between the two countries, two countries should, uh, should go forward uh, and uh, make their relationship public. I would like to see uh, President Erdogan shaking hands uh, with uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. I don't care if it will take place in the United Nations or in Ankara or in Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, whatever. But uh, we have to name this a genuine normalization. And it's a win-win situation also for Turkey. Uh, at the end of the day, having proper relations with Israel will also pave a, a sort of a normalization uh, for the Turkish-American relations. Indeed. Well, uh, we have less than uh, a minute and, and 40 seconds, but uh, I'd like to ask you, Mr. Irim, uh, do you see a reality in which Netanyahu and Erdogan shake hands? Uh, it's hard for me to imagine personally, but... Uh, was uh, such a scenario even uh, considered on, on Ankara's side? And uh, when the Abraham Accor uh, Accords occurred, uh, the President Erdogan at the time uh, downgraded relations with the UAE uh, over uh, signing that agreement with Israel. And there were different um, actions undertaken which uh, thwarted that. Has that really changed since then with regard to uh, the, the possibilities of rapprochement? Well, very quickly, uh, regarding the Abraham Accords, I think President Erdogan was concerned that uh, promises were being given regarding Palestine during this normalization that the UAE had no authority to do so. And of course, these uh, normalizations were having third party incentives, which uh, actually isn't very, very healthy. Any type of normalization between Turkey and Israel won't need 30 third party incentives just because there's so many bilateral interests at play that uh, third party incentives are meaningless. Uh, when, you get, when you come to the Erdogan Netanyahu story, will they shake ever shake hands? I think Erdogan will shake hands with an Israeli prime minister. I don't know if that will be Netanyahu. That depends on a what the Israeli elections will bring. Unfortunately, this is all the time that we have for today. So I'd like to thank Mr. Erim, Dr. Konya Narochak, and Mr. Oren for being in uh, today's program. And I'd like to thank our viewers as well. And we will see you next time. You just watched TV7 Jerusalem Studio. We encourage you to pray for the challenges raised in today's program. If you were blessed by our production, please consider supporting TV7 Israel. The details of our respective bank accounts for donations from Europe and the United States appear on the screen. Your generosity allows us to continue to serve God's calling, to broadcast content that truly matters through TV7 Israel from Jerusalem.